just say straight off the bat um, that I've actually lived through um, two situations wow. in my life that are very similar to this film. Mm -hmm. And the film was incredibly raw and emotional for me, and it really did touch a nerve. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on really bringing that to the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm, so yeah, I'm <laughs> fantastic from both of you. But I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. um, the script mm -hmm. is a remarkable piece of work mm -hmm. uh, it, with the fragmented nature of the mm -hmm. script. I'm just curious as to how you wrote that. Did you write that as fragmented, or did you write it as a linear form and then cut it up? Or? No, I wrote it as fragmented. And I, it's, it started off as wanting a structure that would reflect Tom's emotional and psychological state. Right. So I was very, I was very conscious of that. I, I, I'd been really interested in, you know, some of the work other filmmakers had done in terms of structure and looking at the way that that can that can tell a story in, purely through the through the structure. And I, 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 I realised early on that what I wanted to do was make a visceral, emotional film, and so that I wanted by deciding how the script should go together was was very much go from one scene to the next always had to be on an emotional level mm -hmm. you know i didn't mu it didn't matter to me whether it was if, if there was a story element in it great but that wasn't the first priority which is somewhat different to when you write a linear you know it's all about story 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 Absolutely. and so um, in a film that doesn't have a huge amount of plot a lot of things happen but it's not you know it's not a comp complex plot it it was really important that it, for the the type of experience I wanted the audience to have was it needed it needed to be motivated by emotional ideas and so um, that's kind of what I did and I, I started I wrote the, that first little pre-title bit um, and you know that changed a lot as, as I went on but it was ba a basic idea and then slowly it starts to unravel and slowly you start to reveal things um, purely from a purely from a you know a, a film point of view I knew that I liked the idea of going with a character down, you know, in a certain direction and then doing a big U-turn where you reveal something. I like yeah. films that do that. You know, the, the classic is something like Jacob's Ladder where you follow a guy and his life and then suddenly it all just changes and that's a very good that's a very good uh, uh, very good analogy because uh, Jacob's Ladder actually didn't occur to me until just now but yeah. yes it has a very similar but that, structure. But that idea where that to me is is what when I'm in sitting in the cinema and, and you, you, you have your breath taken away by all your expectations have been put in this basket <laughs> and then suddenly it's all popped over to that basket. And that, that to me is a really exciting thing to watch and to experience. So finding the balance in where exactly, you know, that the, the, the change happens yeah. was, you know, a big thing for both writing and editing. And, and I, I, think for, for, I think we've got the balance right because what it is is to have it earlier is to dilute the, re the reveal and to have it later is just too much but yeah. um, so that was you know that there, there were little signposts along the way you know and uh, it, it it's probably like a five and a half act screenplay as opposed to a three act um, <laughs> but in a way it's impossible to sort of evaluate it so how many terms. index cards are in your office <laughs> well as I was just saying I, I, I had no index cards in the writing wow. only, only when we edited that's amazing. Yeah. All right, so how do you prepare for such a raw emotional oh, I role? get the index cards and write up <laughs> when she, things happen. She wrote I all did the index, the index cards, cards yeah. for me and makeup and and um and costume. We oh. all wanted to know when things were happening so we could <laughs> yeah. we could do our jobs properly. Try and get the chronology right. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. I want to know where I want to know where I am hmm. every time and 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 hmm. what's surrounding um, surrounding all of that, but that's just the the, the mathematics of, of the, mm, of the stuff. The other the other preparation stuff um, was well. Initially, I, I didn't know that in, it, this story had anything to do with Jonathan's experience, so I already had ideas of what um, of what I wanted to do just based on the script. I thought that was a very very strong portrayal of who this person was, and mm. so I'd and I came in with that and got the job based on that. So it wasn't until the first rehearsal then um, then I then I had a chat with um with Jonathan about it and he handed it over to me and I did you know I just did what what I, I feel like um the best sort of work to do is stuff that will spark my imagination because mm. I think actors we have to imagine no matter what no matter how many experiences I might have had that are close to this or how far away I am from it it doesn't matter because my job is to to to, to I, I actually enlighten think, my yeah, imagination and I, I actually with as I, think, much I, think, as possible. I think you're absolutely right and I, I think often performance is diluted and stilted because of the obsession with 
what happen in inverted commas what happens in real life and that yeah. somehow that's a guide you know I don't think people go to the cinema no. to experience what happens in real life they've got a real life to, to you know Absolutely. I think it's about <laughs> wanting to see imagination and, and but a creativity lot of times real life is performance and exactly. when you see this when you go to the yeah. cinema you're seeing what you exactly. really what you're really thinking what you're really feeling especially with this film because you're not watching someone grieve you're experiencing like trauma with them yes and you, you're experiencing you want to be taken a, to different worlds yeah. that's what that's you know whether it's yeah. Jurassic Park or whether it's you know the horror of being attacked by a shark you know or something that the place that Burning Man goes to you want to be taken and that's as, as an audience yeah. you want to go to a world that that you can experience in, in the conf confines of that, hopefully in a creative way. Yeah. So this is for both of you. What is the Tbilitsky method of, act of directing actors? Did, do you have a really <laughs> strong idea of what you want? Do you let them go on their well, own? In, in this, I had a very strong idea. Yeah. You know, I mean, in writing... <laughs> she finds us amusing. No, he really did, which, which of course is the best, the yeah. best in the world, like the best experience of it and also was the... You the know, hardest like, in The hardest way. thing, yeah, yeah the, the hardest thing about it. But that's great because you know that you're being directed by someone who you can trust because they have a vision. It's it's not like being with someone who's indecisive and doesn't really know and you've got to give them a thousand options, which is also okay, you deal with that, but knowing that you're safe and then that, you know, and that within that you can, like I was free to suggest things, of course, but Jonathan knew what he wanted and that's really, that's really good. Like you feel very safe in that mm. way. You know, you can talk about how you work, but that was my experience <laughs> that's, of, that's, of you. I mean, you know, I like yeah. to give, whether it's an actor or, you know, a head of department or any crew member. I like people to to have the responsibility that their job entails. You know, I don't want to stifle an actor um, and I certainly don't want to stifle their process, but I also don't want to, I also don't, you know, with something like this, I had a very clear idea and it, to, for me, I only I only follow one adage and it's, and, and it's when people come, you, you get a million ideas thro thrown at you, it's all about what I think is best for the film because right. no, Small, because a film is a good film if it's greater than the sum of its parts. And you know, a great performance doesn't necessarily make a great film. And it's about serving so true. the film. And uh, you know, that 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 I always going. Okay, so this idea that blah blah blah, I may not like it, but maybe it's good for the film, or vice versa. You know, and 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 that's yeah. really a lot of the discussion. I mean, one of the other things was was. Um, I really wanted each scene to be played in the here and now. I didn't want anyone relating to their role in flashback. I wanted it. I wanted everything to be vital and in the moment, if you like, mm. of, as if it was happening now. And so yeah. that, in a way, you know, you, you put you, that's enough rules to kind of follow on. You know, I think yeah. so often, the more I do, the more I direct, the more I realise is it's so easy to become complicated, and it should be a simple process. It should be a couple of ideas that guide you in the direction. You know, usually in our preparation, we've done enough talking. Yeah, and stuff. we did a yeah. lot of preparation, a lot. Mm, like yeah. between us and and with Matthew, and and then I went off and talked to I don't know how many doctors and how many you know friends who have had the experience and all of that kind of, and read so much. And I'm like, goodness, I will say, and I brought them stuff to read. They didn't <laughs> yeah. really want to. No, but exactly. I brought, I brought Matthew things to read. He's like, thank you. <laughs> <In the bin. laughs> I have to say, with Boyana but, too, you know, Boyana in many ways got the rough end of the stick in terms of the schedule because. She was oh, yeah. she was on for eight weeks, which yeah. was the shoot, and she did, you know, maybe only one or two scenes every week. You know, a lot of the other cast, Matthew was obviously there, but he was in every scene. Mm. But a lot of the other cast were, you know, in little blocks of a couple of days or three weeks or whatever. You know, just the way these things work out, Boyana, you know, might only have one scene in a whole week. Mm. And that's hard, you know, to maintain that. Levity and yeah, but focus it was possible and stuff. Because but, of how he, but I also think how it, Jonathan works. Yeah, and it was because also. Just be there I actually think it was, was good it. for you, mm -hmm. and the character in a way, yeah, because I guess, yeah. because I think it made your role that much more substantial, in a funny sort of way. Sure, yeah. And what and I then was, that week at the end, which was just like intense. crazy week. But also, yeah. what what was great <laughs> is that we, it was quite a tiring film to shoot and make, um, and but whenever Boyana came on set. It was like a whirlwind, you know. It was like full of energy because she had all this time. You know, she was just itching to get it out. And, and yeah, that's true. I was itching and to get I'm it. I'm actually, I actually have this sort of theory, which I mean, I, energy I think plays a huge role in whether a film works or not. And I think a lot of times, you know, films that do fifty, a hundred takes, oh. you know, so w when you finish with the end of the film. You, you've got like 1% of what you shot and what the energy that went into making it is on the screen. 
you know, the thing about one of the reasons low budget filmmaking has such vitality, even mm. though there are elements that don't necessarily work, is because everything you do goes on screen. Mm. And I think that's a really Im important part of it. And so what you're trying to do when you, you know, have a decent budget is maintain the energy that goes into it. And what was great was that you used to come along and full of energy and full of, you know, determination. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on in the set. I just knew that I wanted to do my yeah. scene now. I, I've missed the whole week. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's really funny exactly. to know that. Yeah. So, it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the, the relationships and preparation, mm. the relationship between you and Matthew Goods Tom is incredibly natural and it's a very comfortable feeling. It, it feels like a... Uh, did you get a lot of time to spend with Tom beforehand, rehearsals and so forth, or was it just a natural fit? But kind of both. We, we did, did both. We, 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 we did rehearsed, a bit of rehearsal. but Matthew doesn't like to rehearse and I love it. So we met in between <laughs> well, and, and sort mm. of did reading, read the scenes. And then we would, what would happen is just naturally we would start sharing anecdotes from our lives, the three of us, about things to do with those scenes. First time you, you know, you had sex with a person who was the love of your life or whatever it was. And, mm. um, and so there was this natural kind of... Report. Chemistry in a way. Yeah. It, was, it was really great. And then on set we were buddies mm. who really respected each yeah. other and came together to create those moments yeah. that Jonathan talks about and then left each other for, with our own yeah. processes, however that was. Chemistry yeah. is such an elusive thing, you know. I mean, you can cast the, you know, the biggest actors in the world. You just don't know whether the chemistry is going to exist unless, you know, you've seen it in other films between those two very specific individuals. But, you know, I, I always felt that they both, both Boyana and, and, and Matthew have a, they have a twinkle, playful, naughty kind of personality. And that, that if, ever there's, if ever there's elements that will go together, it's that. And so that it's, there's always a playfulness that goes on regardless of you how... You see that with the lobster stuff. Exactly. You know, <laughs> and, and, and that, that, I think, is, is worth its weight in gold, you know, is what I would yeah. say. Interesting that there's some sort of an attraction going on here. Whoa, yeah, there's an attraction. Be careful that you don't go so far out that you can't find your way back. Yeah. 